Hi, Steve Manning here, Dunbaratu from the KOS project. I'm going to be demonstrating here the new Telnet server that will be showing up very soon in the next release of KOS. Um, it will ship with the Telnet server turned off by default, but you can turn it on and off with the config option. And by default, it runs on the loopback address 127.001, so it's safe enough to not, uh, you know, like open up your computer to anything else. Here, I'm going to be using the freeware Windows program PuTTY as a, an example, although you can use any Telnet client really that you feel like. Set it to uh, address and port number to match the default settings in the game. And when we launch the window, you should see it come up in just a moment, and it will have a menu of the opening screen. There we have it. Now as you look, you can see that the menu you first get shows you something very similar to what you get in the config panel. There are six terminals available in the config panel, and there are six available on the welcome menu you get from Telnet. So you can pick one of them, and in our case we're going to be picking number four, because number four happens to be the one of the ones on the ship you can see right in front of you on the screen. So we pick number four, enter, and we get a clone of the same terminal that you have in-game. Notice it resized the terminal to match so that the two of them are always identical. Um, and that's important for showing displays and whatnot. Now, um, anything you do, anything you type into either window is seen by either window. I have to keep bringing the uh, putty window back to the front because it keeps going behind the Kerbal Space Program window every time I click on Kerbal Space Program because of the annoying way Windows Window Manager works. But anyway, um, so there you have it. And uh, you can pretty much do anything you feel like. I hit Control D, I disconnect, I go back to the welcome menu again. I could pick a different CPU here if I felt like it. And you'll notice that when I pick a different CPU, the control panel shows a different one with a little lightning symbol on it to indicate that it's being remotely accessed right now. And it's one of the other CPUs on the graph, completely independent. I can work on it even though it's not actually showing on the GUI screen anywhere. So I disconnect from that. Let's go back to number four, the one we really wanted to work on. So there we have it. Uh, you can pretty much use anything you want for this. The intention I have is to use it for remote access, multiplayer, and for like role-playing mission control stuff. In this example here, I'm now showing that uh, a script that makes all sorts of stuff appear on the screen is appearing the same on both the Telnet terminal and the in-game terminal. You can look at them and compare them and see that they're coming out exactly the same as they should. So you can run scripts from afar and monitor them. Notice when you resize the window, the other window matches as long as they're both on the same CPU, which is important because the graphical display has to come out looking the same on both windows or it's messed up. Now I'm going to revert this launch. I didn't really want to make a launch demonstration. And notice that when the, C when the CPU part goes out of scope and falls away because we're reverting to an earlier menu, we get dumped back to the original connection menu. There we go. And now we're back to the original connection menu again because we reloaded the scene. So any time that the CPU disappears, either because it's smashed into the ground or because you changed scenes, you will get your Telnet kicked back to the main menu again. So uh, it's pretty handy. Um, I've been having fun playing around with it. Uh, Aaron Drake and I did a little test where he ran my ship from afar using the terminal while he watched me through uh, Google Screen Share, and it worked out pretty well. Um, here we've added a new thing called the terminal height and the terminal width. They're just variables that give you the integer number that you can use for whatever purpose you want. You can query them for whatever needs you have. You can also set them, and setting them will actually change the terminal size to match. This allows you to have a script where your script chooses what it wants its display to look like and forces it to come out that way. Similarly, you can use them in mathematical expressions to help you figure out where you want to put things on the screen. In this uh, next example, I'm just going to print a little letter X in the upper right corner by saying that uh, I want a terminal width minus 1 to be the position it gets put at. So there you can see it shows up right in the upper corner just fine. So we've got that working for us, everything else is working for us, and that's pretty much all I wanted to show off. Um, if you turn the Telnet option off, using the config menu, or using the config command, it will immediately disconnect any telnets that are currently connected. In fact, if you use the telnet window to type in set, conf uh, set config telnet to false, you'll actually kill the connection that you were using to type it in from, which is kind of an interesting thing. 
So there we have it. I hope people find this interesting and useful. I intend to probably do most of my scripting work from an external terminal window from now on, now that it'll actually work. And uh, this should be coming out fairly shortly, as soon as we get the next release going, which we're, ex which we're expecting at any time.